Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Happy Tuesday to you. It's another show. I'm so excited. Oh, this one is a, a whopper. I'm tying a lot of things together here into this really remarkable knot that I hope that each and every one of you are, are sitting down and ready and buckled up for. Okay, so... There's a reason I tell you every Tuesday, you know, that I'm going to have a Tuesday show. It's because I want you to know that if you don't get notified, if you don't get a little little notification, a little email that Jacob's got a new video out, that you know that I'll be here unless I tell you otherwise every single Tuesday. Because some people are telling me they're getting unsubscribed. They're saying they're not being notified. Some people are telling me that um, evil artificial intelligent overlords are working overtime censoring me and unsubbing um them from me and other things and i don't want to pay that one too much mind i know a lot of youtubers are already hello you shouldn't be watching jacob's channel at all huh I think that if there is an AI algorithm running in the background that eh, when it hears my voice and it captures what I'm saying, that it knows that it should be probably burying this video, which is why I ask all of you to share it around. But I'm not saying that's happening. I don't even want to pay it any mind because I know that our thoughts create perception becomes reality. So Project X, today's show, it's a big one. What is the iPhone X? A new viral video by a Berkeley professor called Slaughterbots about how these artificial intelligent drones that they are armed with facial recognition and biometrics and gate recognition that they uh, are programmed to target and they got kill them and there's nothing you could do about it. incredible video I'm going to show you a little bit of it today but about I don't know about 150 of you sent me the email saying Jacob check this out check this out it goes along with your uh, video that you just did on AI I've done a ton of videos on AI this is gonna be another one and I'm not even tagging it with artificial intelligence I'm just kind of like I'm just gonna tag it with Jacob Israel I'm gonna see if right off the bat it gets you know demonetized which is no big deal because you know, then I just ask for human approval and I always get the approval because I'm not here to hurt anybody I'm here to encourage people to wake up you know to rise out of this beast system all of this nonsense it's all nonsense when you find out who you really are it's all happening it's kind of like a, a play that's being uh, you know presented before us and whatever you believe and whatever you you know put your faith into if you want to be a miserable person who's you know tracked down by the government and uh, robots uh, that's what's gonna happen it's gonna happen you know but I think that our power is greater than that. I don't think we need to allow fear to motivate us. So what does the iPhone X, a viral video called Slaughterbots, the Mandela effect, and a video of the moon that is glitching out, that has now, uh, the source of that video footage has been, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the guy's channel is just trashed. It's gone, it's terminated. All because of this video, this, this footage. Um, I just saw this on Secure Team. I think that was a great thing that Tyler did for this channel. Um, we don't know why the channel disappeared, but there was this, yeah, that's where you get the whole holographic moon theory from. Well, today we're gonna be talking about that because it's the weirdest thing. I did a video about um, the Mandela Effect and, and CERN and, uh, and Project Jabberwocky and I was just thinking about this, and then I was thinking about the Matrix, and then I was thinking about this, you know, video that I saw today from uh, Tyler's channel. And it's interesting that this all happened around 2012. My goodness, people, you are in for a ride today. So buckle up, baby, because it's gonna get crazy. Okay, so I, I titled the video Project X because it seems like today artificial intelligence is that new X factor. It's that thing <laughs> that uh, a lot of people, even Warren Buffett, are saying things like, it's going to be disruptive. It's 
I've done a lot of videos about how we know that within the next, I don't know, decade or so, maybe more, maybe less, that there's going to be massive unemployment because of major automation. So I titled it Project X uh, with the idea that you know, there are a lot of people today that are saying that artificial intelligence, that they're going to become our, you know, they're our overlords. And um, it's a scary thing, you know. It's a scary thing. And, and it, you know, the, the, the ability is there uh, with the video that I just did about Sophia gaining citizenship in Saudi Arabia and how you know, everything's kind of moving over to e-currency, um, you know, Bitcoins of the world, that it's pretty simple to see that this, you know, this false reality, this, this idea, what we call reality, this thing that we say is real, which is really just a, a beast system. Um, it's um, an illusion. Uh, a mortal illusion created by a bunch of people trying to keep us focused on things that aren't important, things that don't matter, trying to keep the families broken up because, you know, they don't want critical, free thinking, um, well-adjusted, secure individuals on this planet because if they're like that, most likely they're going to enter into the truth and become set free from this place and then have dominion over it. See, a lot of people forget that Adam was given dominion over all things. Everything that is in the world, everything that has become, everything that you see was first imagined by something. Everything you see around me was first imagined and then created. See, the power of imagination is, is a remarkable thing. There's a, um, a great lecturer from many years ago named Neville Goddard, who actually likened the imagination of man to Christ. It's that creative spirit that is within us all. And I say all this to tie it into the fact that this system, this world system that we say is real is actually more of an imagining. Um, the fact that people are murdering people, the fact that people are miserable trying to kill themselves, the fact that people are hating other people, all of these things are not natural. They're not true. They're false. It's a narrative that isn't true. You've bought into it and you've started to believe that you should hate others. And there's a reason because United, uh, you know, we don't have to stay here anymore. We can rise to that next level, whatever that next level is. But divided, we just continue on in our ignorance, slaves to this beast system. And the system is getting spookier, right? That's what it seems like. So I get these emails on this, um, this really cool mock documentary called Slaughterbots, which was a campaign basically to stop killer robots. And it was presented, uh, I guess it was last week or so, at the UN convention on certain conventional weapons. The video entitled From TED Talk to Battlefield. It was designed to show how you know, incredibly deadly this, this drone, artificial intelligent drone technology um, can be. We're already using, you, you've seen how much death has um, come at the hand of a drone. And in this video, uh, which starts off very much like a TED talk, um, the man stands there and he tells everybody how, you know, humans, they don't kill. They aim too high, they miss. Sometimes they just disobey orders. But robots, on the other hand, drones, on the other hand, they carry out their task. But we have something much bigger. Hell of a pilot? No. That skill is all AI. It's flying itself. Its processor can react a hundred times faster than a human. It has cameras and sensors, and just like your phones and social media apps, it does facial recognition. Inside here is three grams of shaped explosive. This is how it works. Did you see that? That 
metal bank is enough to penetrate the skull and destroy the contents. They used to say guns don't kill people. People do. Well, people don't. They get emotional, disobey orders, aim high. Let's watch the weapons make the decisions. And then this video goes on to show, now look, there's gonna be a link below, because I didn't want I don't want to show the video here. I think you should you should watch it. It's gone viral for a reason. Many of the world's leading AI researchers and humanitarian organizations are concerned about the potential for catastrophic consequences. Yeah, well, we already know. Now, this is like mainstream news now, okay? So think about this. We've been talking about this for a while now. When I saw this movie, I, I immediately thought of that great Black Mirror show. Um, it was the season, I guess it was season, the last season. And basically, you know, because of the massive bee die-off that they created these, these drone bees. They, then these bees that are pollinating all these plants, they get hacked and of course they go on a uh, killing spree and nothing can stop them because they're artificially intelligent and far superior than uh, humans. So a little bit of uh, predictive programming there, considering that I just saw a TED talk, not, not a year ago, what was the name of it? It was called Meet the Dazzling Flying Machines of the Future. And there's a part like eight minutes into the video where you see these drones in the sky with the lighting up, man, and it's insane. It is so much like this mock documentary that you get to thinking, my goodness, you know they already have it. This last demonstration is an exploration of synthetic swarms. The large number of autonomous coordinated entities offers a new palette for aesthetic expression. We've taken commercially available micro quadcopters, each weighing less than a slice of bread, by the way, and outfitted them with our localization technology and custom algorithms. Because each unit knows where it is in space and is self-controlled, there is really no limit to their number. Drones armed with biometrics and cameras, uh, facial recognition, gate recognition, any kind of recognition. Once it's programmed in, the, uh, the artificial intelligent bot um, links on and then has one mission. And uh, that mission is to carry out its task. So, you know, the Slaughterbots video was, was, was rather disturbing, you know, because just like that Black Mirror episode, it could be hacked. And what if it could be hacked? Then you could just basically, just like in that video, any target, boom. You, know, you start speaking out against this, you start speaking out against that. Now, that's terrifying. And it has a lot of people very, very upset and worried. And listen, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I was a little upset considering they uh i mean how incredibly intelligent these artificially intelligent bots are um that there was a footage the verge just did a the verge just i was like what is it, a day or two ago just read a great article on the verge about how they are now using these artificial intelligent drones and and basically what they did was they um they created you know a maze for the drone to kind of uh, to race the world champion drone pilot. And uh, of course, it was like the first time that this thing was, was programmed and put on line. Now, the human pilot now had time to practice and it won, but by very small margin. But the difference is here, you know, this, was, um, this is not being done by DARPA. So I'm sure they have drones that are far superior, just like you see Google's DeepMind, 
their AI has basically beaten everything in any one at any game anywhere. But here's the crazy thing is, is that this artificial intelligent drone, it was more accurate. Like, it was like perfect. It ran the course perfectly, just a little bit slow. iPhone X, okay? There's something something spooky about that iPhone X. I mean, it, uh, I don't know, just, just the, the fact that they're calling it the iPhone X and the fact that, you know, all the colors are blurred, you know, which it goes along with reality today that the lines are blurred, you know? People are calling good evil, they're calling evil good, and no one really knows, and everything's okay, and you can be whatever you wanna be, and truth is dead. Actually, according to Time Magazine, just recently, that was the cover. But it isn't. It's actually being birthed within all of us, many of you. Because you know that you feel like you're different, right? You know that, you know that there's something, something off about everything around you. And you feel like you're not, you know, you're not really part of the system. You feel like an outsider. I get emails all the time, people say, I feel so alone, Jacob. Jacob, I feel so alone. And I say, well, that's because you sort of are. Because they haven't woke up all around us. They're still trapped in the system. But you, you woke up, you snapped out of it. Now you're starting to see things differently, but there's been missing a piece. Because the people that got you to this point, a lot of them, you know, they used fear as the motivator. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you that it's time to let the fear go. Because all of this is working together for our good, eventually. And as I've been saying for a long time, I said, look, the world is going to get crazy. And it's going to get crazier. And things are going to get spooky, right? But guess what's happening along the way? You're seeing corruption exposed. You're seeing um, lies being shouted from the rooftops. You're seeing entire industries being taken down and portrayed to be the perverse system that it really is. Now, do you think that all of this stuff that's working together, do you think that it's something that you should really be afraid of? Or do you think it's something that you should be excited about? Like I'm excited. Like we're on the verge of something. And this artificial intelligence, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a little spooky, okay? Yeah, sure, I get it. But you know what is spookier? Is the fact that there are people that are like heads of departments in government, like James Gates. He was the, he's a Medal of Science winner. He was Obama's uh, national scientific advisor. He's a quantum guy, quantum theory guy, right? And uh, he used equations to basically balance everything. And what he found at the very center of it all was computer code out of a browser. Now I've done shows on this. If you haven't seen my video on the simulation theory, you should check it out. Because there are a lot of people that believe that this is some kind of a simulation, which would explain the Mandela effect, which is why you know, one day you remember the Coke logo being a certain way and then all of a sudden pff, it's different. or the famous lines from movies that you knew. I've done plenty of videos on this and shown plenty of evidence that this is going on. I've actually witnessed firsthand a change and a change back, a flip-flop, which, because, you know, even though I did all these videos, I never said it was real because I, I didn't know for sure. Could have been my memory, right? I mean, there were things like I wrote essays on certain scriptures that don't even exist anymore, but yet the essay is still there. I'm going on and on and on about a line, a passage in scripture that is no longer in the Bible. You know, I mean, that stuff I could write off as, okay, maybe I forgot. 
But when you see things change and change back, like the Apollo movie line, Houston, we have a problem. When I started doing this, it was, um, Houston, we've had a problem. And then it flip-flopped back. And when did all this happen? This is how I tie it all together, right? Into a neat, interesting bow. A lot of people say around 2012, remember all the hysteria about the world was coming to an end 2012? A lot of people say that it did, that maybe we have flip-flopped over into another a parallel dimension, uh, that there's an infinite amount of us's. I've done plenty of videos on this as well. Now, if you don't believe it, I'm not saying that it's true. I'm just saying these are you know, scientific theories and these are uh, philosophical theories and these are faithful theories that um, a lot of people are holding on to. And I find it fascinating either way. It doesn't matter either way to me. A lot of people say, how can you believe in God and say that we could be in a simulation? I say, because I exist. And none of this is real anyway in the grand scheme of things because if I exist and I'm an infinite being and so are you, I am now just having a human experience in a world that is temporal. Just like Adam, he took upon him sins in the world and he died. The physical man dies, but there's a second man that rises in his stead, that second Adam, that second man. It's not Jacob, it's Israel. It's a changed life. And that's what this channel is about. And that's what I'm trying to get all of you on board with. To see that you're more. To be excited, to explore joy and happiness and yes, and even prosperity. Not like you, you, you be rich. No, but to have more than you need. And to be secure and to understand that no matter what happens in the world whether it's killer drones or it's, you know, the evil government or the sinister powers that be, whether it's the Illuminati, that nothing can touch you. Because we, though we wrestle against principality and powers in this world, we are more than conquerors. We are lights in this world. Jesus said that he was the firstborn among many brethren. You ever have a, a brother or a sister? I'm the firstborn among many brethren. It's kind of like me saying to you, like, I'm, you know, like, I'm kind of one of the first that understood this. And now I'm sharing it with you, that there's a lot of other people that are going to come to the knowledge of the truth. Like the scripture says, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What is glory? Here's the cool thing. It's the glory of God to conceal a thing. So the hope of glory is to uncover the thing that's been hidden within you. It's the glory of God to conceal a thing. It's the uh, honor of kings to seek and search out a matter. We are those kings and queens. We are those sons and daughters that are meant to seek out the truth. So look, we're thinking about it. We're talking about it, AI, and it's going to happen. It's already here. It's happening now. It's all over the internet. It's creating its own AI. It's talking to itself in dark areas of the web. Yes, it's going to be the head of the financial system. Sure, we know all this. But why are we scared? Because it's all just a dream after all. And just like any person who can actively shape and reshape their reality in a dream, so can we. We can be awake wake up from the sleep. A third of scripture, a third of the scriptures are about waking up, about waking up. Oh sleeper, thou that sleepest, wake up. Stop dreaming. So Secure Team does this video about this uh, glitchy moon. Um, I guess this channel had done a video uh, and he was known for Locking on to the, you know, he just showed tons, thousands of hours of footage of the moon. And, and uh, he just luckily, while he was recording, caught this. It was like they called it a, you know, a, a moon, the moon wave. It was kind of like a wave that moved through the, the moon. You know, I had thought to myself as I'm watching this, because, you know, I've heard about the holographic moon theory. And uh, I think it's, I think it's cool, man. I think it's like, if, if I'm going to do videos on simulation theory, yeah, sure, I mean, it's possible, you know? But the instant I saw that footage, I remember the first time I saw it, I thought, man, that's like a glitch in the matrix. Now, what's interesting about all of this is because this thing happened at around 2012, about the same time that people were starting to wake up to the uh, Mandela effect, you know, was that like caught? Was it? a change from one dimension to another? 
Was it just some kind of a disturbance in the video, right? Even though that there were like 30 other people that filmed it as well, and it wasn't the same? Or was there a change in the programming? Uh, I did a video about um, the Mandela effect and, and AI, and there was this Reddit post and I talked about how this innocuous Reddit post was just very, very well written and it was in a story area. And I had said that, you know, I just thought there might be more to it. And I did a little research into it and into the things that it was sharing about, you know, they called it the fork and it was a, it was an old collider in Texas and that there was an artificial intelligent program and that it actually was tapping into this simulation that we call reality and changing things. It was called Project Jabberwocky. And I thought, wouldn't that be interesting? You know, there's a little tie in there. I don't know, listen, I'm not saying it's true, people. I just think that all of this stuff is super cool. And I know that it's scary. And look, when I saw that Slaughterbots video, the first thing I did was I got my, my children over and I said, look at this. And I said, okay, so now we gotta s somehow see a future where something like this doesn't happen. Collectively, we're in charge of this place, people. So instead of creating and seeing the worst, I want you to create and see the best. I did a video a couple of years ago where I saw the corruption and I just thought it was just so in our face. And so I started in the video after video, I started talking about how if our words have power, then I want corruption at the highest levels to be revealed. I want to see, you know, the lies be revealed. I want to see a renaissance and change. And I think it's interesting that just a couple of years later, here we're seeing, you know, the veil being taken back. And I know it's being taken back in your life. And I'm glad that I'm a part of it. I love each and every one of you. Please do subscribe, share, check the bell, and do all that good stuff. And help me get to 100,000 because we're almost there and I think it's going to happen soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.